Welcome back to Tokyo on Fire. You know, if, even if you're watching Japanese politics, it might have escaped your attention that the Diet passed a law to allow people 18 and 19 years old to vote in the next general election. That will be in July. The law goes into effect in June 16th, and you have about 2.4 million new voters. The question is, will they participate, and how will they participate? Michael, what's your take on this? My take is that this is something that was supported by all the parties. It was something Who can that, deny it? Who, yeah, who can could, who could say, no, and the young people should not have a chance right. to vote. They've graduated you would look from, awful stingy. Yeah, yeah, they've graduated from high school, they're going to college, you know, we're, we're expecting them to, to think deep thoughts. Mm -hmm. Until the now, age the, of age, majority. the age of majority has been 20 years of age right. in all aspects. Now we have this slightly, this slight out in terms of the, the age at which you can vote. Right. And yeah, 2.4 million new voters will be on the rolls, but if they behave in any way like their, their immediate seniors, people in the 20 to 29 year age bracket, only about a third of them will actually show up, right. which means that the uh, political impact will be really small. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, the parties are going all out about this. And typically, uh, young voters don't vote for the establishment. They vote for the fringe groups, for the new groups, for the, the, the charismatic new leaders, somebody that's a little bit closer to their age, not the fuddy-duddies who are in the positions of power. Well, the thing is, in this case, we don't really see some party that represents youth. Right. Let's face it, the, the DPJ is a party of fuddy-duddies, mm -hmm. and even the Communist Party is sort of a sure. fuddy-duddy party. So that you, you don't get a sense of that there's a new vital force, perhaps aside from the Osaka, what they're calling an initiatives for Osaka is, is now the new name of the party. This week. This, who knows? Uh, but the, that group is, is actually youth oriented, but it's only that regional party. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, on the national level, it's hard to gauge who can attract the voters, and so all the parties are trying. You know, I didn't mean that in a dismissive way of, you know, what, you know, what is the name of that party in Osaka this week? You know, that provides a real vibrant input into the political process, and the fact that Hashimoto is, you know, really starting to engage with the prime minister and pull, you know, Osaka and, and Osaka politics into national politics, I think is a very good thing. In addition, the in inclusion of the young voters, I think, is also one of those things that potentially can add a spark. You know, oh, it certainly will have some kind of effect in the Osaka area because you have a party to vote for. Right. But elsewhere, they don't really have a party to vote for. They can right. vote to be part of the LDP machine, and that, mm -hmm. for certain members of the uh, in the 18 and 19 year old set, they have to think about, okay, who do I work for? Right. My boss supports the LDP, I better support the LDP as well. I want to uh, appeal to my boss and appeal to my, the, the sensibilities of the people around yeah, me. I, I don't know, one of the things that we frequently um, are confronted with is the fact that, you know, the way that we used to analyze and predict Japanese politics just doesn't work anymore. It's it's a new world and, and um, the seals, the, the a great collection of young people during the security legislation at the Diet. They had a huge impact. They got a lot of news, but they added a vibrancy to the debate, even though they were unsuccessful. I think that there's a lot of pent up frustration, or at least a coalition that, you know, it's like um, there are mothers that are against, you know, any sort of uh, revision to the Constitution where their sons might become eligible, eligible for being be in, in harm's way or whatever. Yeah. Right. right? And then that, I agree that the, the SEALS phenomenon, the, the creation of dedicated protest cadres right. who were able to grab the attention of the nation with mm -hmm. their arguments, even though there was no hope in their, in their quest. Everything had already been decided in 2014 on July the 1st right. when the LDP and the Kumeto agreed that collective security is constitutional, and we are in support of it. That whole process was all for show. Sure, but and yet the show was really gripping because just when things seemed like they were just going to be rote, suddenly the young voters appeared. Right, and right. I agree, they really did make 
a, a very, very strong impression, both internationally and domestically. Well, there's also something here in this, this culture about the underdog, you know, and, and voting for the underdog and the beauty of even in the face of defeat, still fighting, still still putting all of your effort there. And, and there's, I, I think there's an appeal there. And for an election process, I mean, look, I mean, one of the things that um, always struck me as, as funny was when there's an election in Japan, it's not like what you think an election should be, it's more like a festival. And people aren't really committed to the policies that are pronounced by different political parties. It's a party, right? It's a festival. Well, it's a, it's an, it's a social engagement. Right. That you are there, not necessarily because you understand what the policies are. And that's one of the funny things about these policy manifestos that they put on their websites. Yeah. Yeah, but does right. anybody read them? Does That's anyone right. really know what the set of policies are? You 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 do it because of associations. Your skinship. Your your you do it because of whether relationships. You're, you know you know someone in the in the uh, support group, the koen kai, mm -hmm. or you in your chokai in the in, in the neighborhood association. The the guy who's in charge of it, or the the woman who's in charge of it, is leaning on you, saying right. you know hi yeah. Or you have a relative who's who's a member of the soka gakkai. That person mm -hmm. will definitely call you and say, are you going to vote? for the Kometo, right. and you, all of it is social interaction, and it's not like politics, it's really retail, and it's really right. close, and it's, yeah, it's skinship. Right, well, the, the organization and the, the, the performance of SEALDS during the security legislation was really masterful. They had music, they had handsome kids with the microphone, they had pop stars, it was really well organized, and I think the, the fact that they were able to interject, you know, the security legislation into the normal lexicon, what's going on in, in, in politics today and what are people talking about, what's written about in the newspaper, I think that really enhanced the discussion. Well, you can certainly see that the, 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 it, it, it shook the parties, mm -hmm. the established parties. And now we see them trying their best to appeal to young people. Most of what they do is really what you'd call lame. Right. And it's just, you look at it, you say, oh man, that is embarrassing. But because we had the SEALS phenomenon, we're seeing pe the sense that we really have to try for this, right. and we have to go for this. So, politics is changing. Who knows what an impact it'll have by having 18 and 19 year olds vote in the next election, but you can be sure that there will be an interesting new dynamic interjected. Please stay tuned.